Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father, again, we just thank you for this day that you've given unto us. We thank you for having brought us into this a new year. And Father God, as we come this morning, we thank you that you've allowed those who are here uh, to make us here safely, Father. We know streets are bad with inclement weather. But Father God, all things are in your hands. We ask your blessings today. We ask that your Holy Spirit, even though it may not be many of us here, Father, but we thank you for those who are. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would move within this place. Father God, give me a word to deliver to your people on this first Sunday of a new year. Be with us now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Again, to all of you, Happy New Year. Uh, it's good to uh, even uh, know that uh, you are at home, but to be able to come before you uh, to say a word uh, that I believe will uplift us if we are open to receive it on this morning. Uh, those of you who are in the sanctuary, I ask that you will stand for the reading of the word of God Amen. Those who are here, stand. If you want to do so at home, that's fine. This morning, I want to look at Genesis chapter 17, uh, verses 15 through 17, and I shall be reading from the New International Version. Then I shall conclude with chapter 21, verses 1 through 2. Genesis 17, 15. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarai bear a child at the age of 90? Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. I want to talk this morning from this thought, pregnant with new possibilities. Pregnant with new possibilities. And I do solicit your prayers today. I recently read that more and more women over the age of 35 are now having their first baby. It seems that many women delayed having children over pursuing advanced degrees and building their careers. They are now attempting to conceive at an older age and bring children into this world. However, many of them have faced are facing problems with conceiving. We just celebrated the birthday of Jesus, where Mary, a teenage mother, who some estimate to be around 13 or 14 years of age, conceived and delivered to humanity the Savior of the world. On this first Sunday in a new year, I want to look at this idea of getting pregnant, not when one is young, but when one has grown old. It has been said if there are no babies crying in church, the church is dying, or at least facing a major challenge to grow on numerically and to some degree spiritually. When looking at a pregnancy, it is the female who is termed as being 
pregnant. However, I believe that God can fill all of us with new possibilities. So in the time allotted to me this morning, I want to suggest that as a church family, we all, young and old, male and female, should want to get pregnant with new possibilities as we move into a brand new year. In this story about Abraham and Sarai, we discover that God has a plan for each of our lives, and we never get too old to deliver on the promises of God. Jeremiah 29 and 11 reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You Bible readers will remember how God had made a covenant with Abraham that his offspring would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Yet when it seemed like God would not deliver as God had promised, this man who time has come to call the father of the faithful took matters into his own hands. At the age of 86, Abraham had a son by a maidservant named Hagar. But God would later shock Abraham with the news that Ishmael was not the promised son. Abraham was to bear a son through Sarai, his wife, a son who was to give rise to nations and kings. Abraham was shaken to the core for all his dreams and all his plans had been placed in Ishmael. He no doubt had been wondering about how all of this would come to pass. He was old and his wife was old. How could the promise of God be fulfilled at such an advanced time in his and Sarai's lives? Let me begin today by suggesting that many times there is a delay between God making the promise and the delivery of the promise. I said there is a delay between God making the promise and the delivery of the promise. The text says that Abraham fell face down and laughed. God appeared through three strangers in chapter 18 who showed up at Abraham's tent door. One of the men says to Abraham, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah, who was eavesdropping, also burst into laughter. Why didn't God just say when she would have the baby? He did not because he knew that Sarah needed some work done on her. Many of us are not ready to receive the promises of God because God is not through working on us to prepare us to receive the promise that he's made. Even the mere suggestion that God can birth new life through us who are old perhaps cause some of you to laugh because it would just be a joke to us. So there is a delay between the promise and the conception because Sarah, who was going to have the baby, and even Abraham to a degree, were not ready to be parents. And you can understand that for everybody who participates in the reproductive partnership is not ready to be a parent. Some are just producers. A 
parent is one who provides care, nurtures, training, development, direction, and discipline. God knew that Sarah was not ready. Many of us who have been hearing a lot of promises from the Bible are trying to figure out if God has made these promises. Why has God not delivered on his word? Well, the answer is because God needs to work on us. God had to work on Sarah because of her doubt, because of her apprehension, thinking that there are some things that are too hard for God to do. What is strange is that she lived with a man who was a paradigm of faith. Abraham is the perfect example of what a person of faith ought to be like. Yet Abraham's faith had not affected her. That goes to show you can sleep with somebody with faith and it will never rub off on you. All right. You remember how God told Abraham to get up and move. but God did not tell him where to go. Abraham got up packed his bags, called the moving company, left home going to a place where God would show him. Sarah had slept in the same bed with Abraham, yet she had many doubts. She had seen God bring them out of situations nobody else could have gotten them out of. She saw how Abraham had rescued Lot from the hands of the enemy with only 318 of his trained men. So it was not that she did not have a history with God. Repeatedly, there was Sarah tagging along, getting all the residuals of a spouse's faith with no faith of her own. Here she was wanting a blessing, feeling left out, discriminated against because God had done nothing special for her directly. Everything that she had received came to her in a roundabout way. My brothers and sisters, don't allow your only experiences with God to be through other people because the reality is that God wants you and I to be fertile with new possibilities. In other words, God wants us to deliver on what God has deposited within us. God is not looking for surrogate Christians. Sarah shows us why God had to work on her and why it took so long to get this baby. You see, faithlessness is what I call spiritual birth control. A lot of people have not gotten pregnant with new possibilities because they are using spiritual contraceptives. Spiritual contraceptives are phrases like, I'll believe it when I see it. It will never happen in my lifetime. If it wasn't for bad luck, I would have no luck at all. That's easy for you to say. You are controlling the birth process. So God has never been able to deliver any of his promises through you, even though he comes every Sunday to fill us with his word. You see, the word is the seed of God. God plants that seed and grows it. God speaks that seed into our minds, into our intellect. He speaks it 
into our will. It manifests itself if we receive it, but there can be no conception without reception. If we never receive the word, we can never deliver on the word. You see, the warm of a woman does not pounce on the seed. It receives the seed. Many of us come here aggressively pursuing the word, but we just won't receive the word. God wants us to open, to be open, so that we can receive the word of God, so that it can penetrate and grow us to live a life live in the image of Jesus Christ. God wants our mind. God wants our life. God wants our faith. And every time we demonstrate and display doubt in God's ability, when we display doubt in God's power, in God's promise, we are spiritually controlling the birth of the promise in our life. So God wants to deposit his possibilities in our life. God wants to put his potential in us because to be pregnant is to suggest that reception, conception, and intimacy have already taken place. Many people don't want to know God until Sunday morning. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't want any discussions about him during the week. All right. They don't want to talk about church. Some have not opened their Bible since last week. They have, not, they have not looked at the group me, the scriptures, day in and day out. Yet they want the promises of God. We want God to just show up in our life. But you know, we have got to be intimate with him. We must develop a meaningful prayer life. We must meditate on him both day and night. We must allow his word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light along our pathway. So we must develop a life of intimacy with God. There are times when we show up at church on Sunday morning, engage in everything that leads to intimacy, but we are never intimate with God. We do all kinds of things that puts us in the frame of mind to be intimate, but then when the word is introduced to us, we reject intimacy. We come in, sing the church songs, pat our feet, clap our hands, say amen, shout, wave our hands because we love the singing of the choir. Mm -hmm. It's like the spouse comes home, sets the tone for a romantic evening, fix a good meal, lights some scented candles, put on their best lingerie or pajamas, a little Luther playing in the background, right. Right. only to find your mate asleep oh, uh. in front of the television. <laughs> yes, we praise God, but when it comes time for the word, All right. we've already gone to sleep. Yeah, Somebody ought to help me today. Oh, Brothers and sisters, don't keep showing up where God is and never get close to God. Quit hanging out around people who are engaging in praise, who want to be close. We sing, draw me nearer. And then we never make that leap to become intimate with God. You and I have got to want to see God, want to talk with God, Walk with God, to want God to talk with us during the course of the week. We have got to have a desire to hear God speaking to us when the preacher is not preaching. 
We have to have a desire to hear God speaking to us when the Sunday school teacher is not teaching. We must have a hunger to wonder what else does God have to say to me? Why is God working on Sarah like this? Why is God working on you and I? God is trying to develop us before his seed can develop in our life. Before we are able to lift our life to a new level. So we are not trapped by traditional things that tie us down. God, you know, has to get us to the point where we don't need evidence anymore that God will do what he says. It seems to me that as the evidence of God's presence in our life increases, the need for more evidence would decrease. As we look at our lives, see what God has already brought us through. Why are we still demanding proof from God that God will see us through? Right. If he's done it before, yeah. somebody know that God can do it, he can do it again. Yeah. By now, God has done more for us than ever before. The pages of our diary and memory are full of true life stories of how God brought us out when our backs were against the wall. We have our own footnotes of how many times God brought us out of a mess that by right we should not have gotten out of. We have testimony after testimony of how God has paid our bills even when we mismanaged our finances. God gave us jobs when we had no experience. God allowed us some way and somehow to send our children to college. What more evidence do we need today? Here we are, many of us, 40, 50, 60, more years old, still saying, I want God to show me. If you have not seen God work by now, something is wrong. And still in our old age, God is trying to speak to us. No, you're not too old to get pregnant. I don't care what others may say. God says you still got some possibilities. You and I can still see the power of God at work in our lives. If we stop asking for evidence and stop letting the natural contradict our spiritual reception. Well, let me quickly Tell you why some people avoid getting pregnant with God's word. You see, pregnancy causes changes. Some people don't want to get pregnant because their vanity gets in their way. They want to keep their figure. You can never bring forth what God wants you to bring forth in your life if you're not ready to make a change. We want to be accepted by the crowd. But I tell you today, you got to make some changes in your life. You can't run with the same crowd that you used to hang out with. We can't do what we've always done. Not only does it require some changing on our part, but it would also require some stretching. The abdominal area extends itself during pregnancy. When God is ready and working on us, God stretches us. When God wants to fill us, when God wants to deposit his word in our life so that the world can see in spite of what we look like, where we came from, what side of the tracks, what color our skin 
is God has to stretch us. But some people don't want to be stretched. They don't think that the gift of life is worth the scars of stretching. But I tell you this morning, every time God stretches you and I, God is trying to take us beyond our capacity. Come on. If God impregnates us with possibilities, it's going, yes, to stretch us. It may require we now leave the walls of this church and go and knock on some doors. Come on, come on. Oh, yes, I've seen that book with all those names on it. Yes, it may require that we pick up the telephone. Start calling some folks that have fallen by the wayside. I'm talking about when God stretches us. It means we have to become caregivers to somebody who is not our relative. When God stretches us, that means we may have to put some gas in our car and take somebody down to the dialysis center when God stretches us. Pregnancy also usually requires some weight gain. We're going to be God's child. We're going to have to handle some more responsibility. We will have to carry a load that we've never carried before. We will be challenged by the word of God. Pregnant mothers are told to get plenty of rest. Eat the right food. Don't smoke. Don't drink. That means that if we are pregnant with God's promises, we must eat the word of God. For you know, it is the only nourishment that will satisfy the hunger of a poor, helpless soul. Well, I've held you long enough today, but you know, God wants to incubate his word. God wants to give it a place to live. Mm -hmm. God wants to give it a place to thrive just like a seed that has been planted in the ground. Yes, and you know, when there is no real attachment, nothing will survive until full term. You understand today it is rejection of God's word that causes us to be barren. It is the rejection of God's word that causes us not to give birth to brand new ideals and new possibilities. That reminds me today of the parable that Jesus told in Matthew chapter 13. You read it where he said a farmer went out to sow his seed. Yes, and as he was scattering that seed, some fell along the path. Birds came along and ate it up. Some of that seed fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil at all. Uh, but it sprang up but because the soil was shattered. When the sun came up, those plants were scorched. And they withered and they died because they had no root. But other seeds fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. But yes, some <laughs> fell on good ground. Ain't God all right? And when those seed fell on good ground, it produced a crop. The Bible said a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown? Jesus explained the parable like this. He said, the one who received the seed 
that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and receives it with joy. But because he has no root, he lasts only a short time. And when trouble comes and persecution comes his way, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. All right. But the one who received the word, hallelujah, <laughs> that fell on good soul is the one who hears the word and understands it. And he goes on and produces a crop yielding 160 and 30 times what he has sold. Good evening, West Canyon. God wants us to receive the word. God wants us to carry the word for the full term. The promises of God only come to fruition when God knows that we are ready to deliver. Well, I'm done now, but God wants us to be fertile with new ideas. But by the time we get to chapter 21, Abraham and Sarah have gone through a whole lot. But God kept his word. Do I have a witness? The record is that the Lord visited Sarah just as he said that he would. The Lord did unto Sarah what he said he would do. She became pregnant in her old age. Boy, Abraham, a son in his old age at the time appointed by God. Sometimes we got to wait for God to move. But believe me when I tell you, God he is faithful. Anybody here know he is faithful. Just wait on him. He will show up. May not come when we want him to come. Is there anybody here that know he will show up? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? God, he will do it. He may delay to strengthen us. He may delay to teach us. He may delay to stretch us. But believe me when I say if we are faithful to God, new possibilities will be born. If we are faithful to God, God has the power to do what he said he would do. Sarah and Abraham rejoiced in their old age. Who would have thunk it? Who could have imagined it? Here was a man, 100 years old, a woman 90. Sarah was bubbling over with joy. She had given birth to a son. The thought that she could bear a son was beyond any thought in her mind. But here she was, holding her child. Giving God the praise for having performed a miracle in her life. This church may be an aging congregation, but let us allow God to lead us. Come on, preacher. Let us allow God to fill us. Yes, let us allow God to make us new. If we are faithful, West Canaan, new possibilities await us. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you.